So this is Berlin, the city that spawned many wars and two devastating world wars, the city of monuments. Yes, monuments to wars, unhurt and undamaged in its previous wars, now ruined Berlin is all one monument, a grim monument to the war that in one form or another has vitally affected the lives of every living person on the face of the earth. This is the objective that men fought, bled, and died to get to. Now we are here, and it is hard to realize that the war is finished in Europe. Great authors, philosophers, men of letters will attempt to record this for history. Another qualified to tell the story is the foot-slogging soldier. He was there. Well, here it was at last, an official. Germany had tossed in the towel. People were letting off steam and having themselves one whale at a time. The way I figure, they'd earned it. Standing on the corner and watching all the fun made me feel good. And yet somehow I couldn't get into the swing of it. I guess I felt mixed up inside. Kept thinking of all the things that had gone on before. All those months of training in the States. Training and of course, marching. Seems like that went on all the time. And one day somebody blew a whistle and we piled into a ship. Days later somebody blew another whistle and we piled off. Then we were training and marching all over again. Only now it wasn't Louisiana or Missouri, it was England. There were maneuvers and problems and then exercises. Funny thing about those exercises, you were always ready to bet that the latest one wouldn't be an exercise at all, that it would turn out to be the real thing. The company clerk heard it from the mess sergeant who had it straight from the colonel's driver. Yes, this time it would be the real thing. No matter how many times you were wrong, you were always ready to bet on the next one. It was the real thing for the fellows in the Air Force. They were out mauling the enemy, tearing up his marshalling yards and depots, smashing his factories, knocking out everything that kept his machine rolling. and ground batteries used to hit back. The Air Force kept right on dishing it out to them. All those months, supplies kept pouring in. Mountains of them. The English used to kid us about it and say their little island would break up and sink under all that weight. Big stuff like locos and tanks. Little stuff too, like rations and cartridges. Everything an army uses from paper clips to planes. Lots of planes. Tens of thousands with all their gadgets and equipment it takes to keep them flying. We needed a lot too, because now the Nazi machine itself was to be hammered and the Luftwaffe written off the books. Fly 
lines and communications ripped to bits. It wouldn't be long now. You knew that when you saw the southern coast. Dinghies and destroyers, corvettes and cruisers, anything that would float was out there waiting. This time when loading began, there wasn't any betting. Couldn't find any takers. This time it was the real thing. This was it. It felt good to be doing something after all that time hanging around the embarkation area. So good you didn't worry about what might happen next. Cheerio, chum. See you in Berlin. It was a tough job and complicated. Those Navy men sure knew how to handle it, but we hadn't seen anything yet. Then the hours began to add up. Hours like you used to put in when you were a kid, sitting in a dentist's waiting room. A fellow who played an instrument or could do a few stunts didn't have to look hard to find an audience. Some of us just played cards or swapped small talk. And there were eager beavers, too. When they started briefing the Navy, we knew whatever was coming was coming soon. And we had our own powwows, what each of us had to do, when and where we were to do it. Back at their inland bases, other GIs were getting ready to push off, the paratroops and the airborne. Just when the guys figured out the deal on pounds and shillings, along comes francs and centimes. The stuff went fast. Maybe the boys figured they wouldn't be finding many bars or shops open for business. Pretty soon, men began to drop out of the games. The plywood buses were pulling up for the tourist trade. Then the big boss himself showed up. few words, the right words. Out where we were lying,
flying, more and more shipping was on the move. It looked like a traffic tangle to most of us, but then we were only landlubbers and wouldn't know. The go-ahead signal was given the men who waited in planes and gliders. slipping away. Then there wasn't any England at all. Only the channel far below, crisscrossed by our convoys. When we heard the motors or spotted them overhead, we knew it was time to stop counting those hours. Somebody joked about unleashing the dogs of war. There was nice courage in a cigarette. And in the air cover we'd all been hearing about and now could see for ourselves. And in the steel wall the Navy had put up around us. and in ourselves. That's why waiting wasn't as tough as lots of us had thought it was going to be. And then, it began. It was the Navy's show. But our own act was coming up.
seconds, maybe it was years, we hit the beach. We were still in it together, those of us who made it. Same on all the other beaches along that strip. We proved something too. I mean to ourselves. Now we meant to hold on. by air had made their landings, but we wouldn't know the full story till later. Right then we were sort of busy ourselves. Troops and airborne have been hacking away at the enemy behind his lines. They'd taken their first prisoners before we landed and met up with their first friends. Taken their first trophies, too, that we Yanks call souvenirs. The Nazis had been pushed back, and along the beaches, man made forts were mushrooming up. Into them were pouring supplies, material, manpower. Out of them were streaming the men who used to sing, We Sail Against England. They were heading for England, all right, but nobody was singing. Our own men kept coming ashore. Reinforcements for those who were pushing on. Replacements for those who couldn't. Then the advance became a trail of smashed towns and crushed villages on the road to Cherbourg. The enemy knew we'd need a real port to take the place of the sand strip landings. We'd have to blast them out, and that's what we did. you had to flatten, it made you feel good to come across plenty who understood why, and who knew you came as friends. street fighting, and there were scraps in the open. Then, one day it was over. The harbor forts of Cherbourg gave in, and a little less than a month after we'd started, the city was liberated. <laughs> 